commas separate clauses, phrases, and lists of words. This is lesson 22 in the Architecture of Grammar. My name is Leon Lavouche. I'm the author of the Architecture of Grammar and the founder of Trivium Writing. In this video, we're going to talk about this very important punctuation mark, the comma. I say it's a very important one because it separates so many different clauses and phrases and lists of words. If we don't have commas, if we misuse commas, we can radically change the meaning of a sentence. And in fact, um, there is a story where a misplaced comma caused a something like a billion dollar loss, or maybe it was in the millions or in the hundreds of millions. But the reality, and especially in legal writing, commas do matter. And even not in legal writing, in any kind of writing, commas do matter because they are um, they, they show this relationship between all these important components and just one misplaced comma can mean something entirely different. So we're going to go over uh, clauses first. So I'm going to erase this to give us a little bit more space. So this is where we're going to be working a lot with our um, information blocks, okay? So we've already been working with them a lot, but this is where it gets quite um, thorough. So again, in any sentence, we have a who and a what. Like we've mentioned before, what makes a dependent or independent is whether there is a conjunction before. So what we're looking at right now is an independent clause. But if I put a conjunction, that becomes a dependent clause, okay? So that's a dependent clause. As we mentioned, we absolutely need an independent clause to have a sentence. So if we have a dependent clause here, then we need to add an independent, okay? So we need a who and a what. Now, how do we trace this distinction? Well, we need a comma here between the dependent and the independent. And then we're going to need a period at the end. So here the comma separates the dependent from the independent. Now, this is a periodic sentence. So this is also a complex, it's a complex sentence, as we mentioned, because it has a dependent and an independent, and it's a periodic sentence because the independent is at the end. Now, let's talk about the second type of complex sentence, which is loose sentence. So we need to start over and we're just going to keep the complex and we are going to look at a loose sentence. So if you remember, the loose sentence is the opposite of the periodic sentence where the independent clause actually comes first. So we have our who and our what. So that's independent. And then we'll have our who and, a, and our what with a conjunction, okay? Now, here's the thing. Because we have a loose sentence, we do not need a comma. We don't need that, nope. So no comma for loose sentences. Although grammatically speaking, it is possible sometimes to put a comma. So, Leon bought a penthouse while um, his parents were doing shopping. But here's the thing though, the while 
is basically used as a connection. So there are two very different types of sentences. It's not used as while as in time, because in that case, we would not be using um, you know, the, the comma. But in most cases, in 99% of cases, you do not need the comma between the independent and the dependent clause. So who, what, conjunction, who, what. So, and then you, of course, have your period. And uh, that is for your complex sentence, which is a loose sentence. Now, let's talk a little bit about uh, phrases. So, I'm going to keep repeating this because it's so important. King in our sentences is who and what. We always have this, right? So that's, that's king. That doesn't change. It's always there. But we also have all these other blocks such as when, where, how, why, how often, okay? Now, when we create our sentences, sometimes we need to put commas between those. So, so the core of our sentence is always the who and the what. So let me erase this and give you some example. And so before the who and the what, we might have all kinds of phrases, whether it be, um, I don't know, in 1910, comma, that's when, okay? In 1910, the men died. The men died, okay? Now it could also be where. Um, it could be where, so in Canada, and then comma, in Canada, people are friendly. Okay, so that's where. It could be... could be how, through a real estate agent, through a real estate agent, and then we have our comma, Leon bought a house. Okay, so this is how, it could be why, could also be why um, why because he wanted some change they all moved away so these are um, you know these are good examples so this is at the beginning now these phrases could be inserted um, in the middle of a sentence, you could have all these different blocks and have a comma and, you know, continue. And if you have a comma, oftentimes it will be blocked like this. So, so this is for phrases. Now, in the architectural grammar in Lesson 22, there are a whole lot of different examples with all kinds of phrases. So you can go and check those. But in the meantime, I also want to talk about list and so between words. So let's say Leon bought a 
house, a car, and a penthouse, okay? So this is a list, so a house, a car, and a penthouse. So here we've got the commas that separate these elements in the list. So the list is a house, a car, and a penthouse. And we have the commas here that we are using. Now here's the thing. Um, for starters, you can have a list of two things. So they all bought a house and a car. If that's the case, you don't need a comma. They all bought a house and a car. No comma. Now if you have three or more elements, that's where you need a comma. So a car and a penthouse. Now, this sentence here, as um, before the end, this is called a Oxford, Oxford comma. Or it's also known as serial comma. And it's actually not necessary to have this. The serial or the Oxford comma is actually a stylistic preference. So you can actually remove it but the problem is, if you remove it, it might cause some confusion. And so um, you can see, for example, online, if you look for some uh, Oxford comma mistakes or some uh, uh, what happens if you don't use those Oxford commas, there, there's some really funny uh, examples, especially with uh, Bill Clinton and Lady Gaga, though I, I forget exactly what it was. but. They all bought a house, a car, and a penthouse. So this is without the serial comma, and this is with the serial comma. Now, in the United States, for example, Chicago style, which is one of the style guides that are used, that is used, um, they do use the Oxford comma. And at Oxford University Press, I believe they also use the Oxford comma. That would make a whole lot of sense. It would be weird if they didn't. But um, AP style in the United States uh, and in Canada does not use the Oxford commas, the serial comma. Additionally, in Australia and some other countries, <clears throat> uh, they don't use it. So it's a stylistic preference. Just make sure that you follow what your style guide says. And so this way, um, there's no confusion. However, I will say if you have a choice, I would personally suggest to use the Oxford comma. But again, it is a stylistic preference, um, so just make sure that you follow your style guide. Now, speaking of lists, there is a rule when it comes to lists, and the rule is called the parallelism. And what this means is that you need to be <clears throat> parallel in what you are listing. So a house, that's a determiner with a noun. Uh, that's also a determiner and a noun, okay? And that's also a determiner and a noun. So these, this list is parallel. So this uh, list is fine. But um, for example, you can say Leon bought a house, a car, and to, and then put a verb. That would not work. So you need to be using the same part of speech across your list. Otherwise, you have to start over and create a new list. So you have to be parallel with the parts of speech that you are using in your list. Otherwise, your reader is going to be confused and it's honestly not going to look nice in a sentence. So always make sure that you respect the rule of parallelism. And so if you want more example of this, you know, go in lesson 22 in the architecture of grammar and uh, so you can see all the, all the examples uh, in the lesson.